everyone, welcome to Pie's Kitchen. Today I've got another breakfast idea for you. Now, I am not a morning person, so breakfast to me is a bit of a struggle because I want something really delicious and interesting, but I don't want to spend any time making it. So I'm always coming up with ideas of what I can do in advance that I can then just reheat in the morning. And so this is such a dish. I am making a chili toast with an egg on top. And as you see, once you've made the chili, which is awesome on its own, it's minutes to put together in the morning. Let's get started. So I am making this vegetarian chili that you can eat as a bowl of chili if you'd like. It's really good on its own, but it's even better with an egg on top. So I've got a pot here and I'm just going to add some oil. And I've got some diced onion and garlic, which I'm going to add. Now I'm using red onion because I've got half a red onion left in the fridge that I needed to use up. Um, but you can just use regular yellow onion. It really doesn't matter for this recipe. Because cutting open an onion when you already have half an onion in the fridge, that's not good form. So now I'm going to add just a little pinch of salt. And the salt will help draw out the liquid from the onion and the garlic and it'll help them soften faster. And I'm just going to saute this until the onion's nice and translucent and maybe even a little bit caramelized. So while that's going, I'm going to keep an eye on it, but I'm going to grind my spices. I've got here some toasted coriander seeds and some toasted cumin seeds. And I'm going to blitz these guys up. Multitasking! Mmm, that smells so good. And the coriander seeds can be a little stubborn, but I don't worry about it too much. And now I'm going to pour my spices into my onion here, which is now translucent and also caramelized a little bit. Get every last bit. Now my spices were already toasted, but I'm gonna just give it a quick toast again in this pot, just 30 seconds or so. Ground spices burn pretty quickly, so you gotta be careful here. Now you can really smell that. It's gonna start to stick a little. Time to deglaze with some diced tomatoes. Ooh, this is diced canned tomatoes, unsalted. That's very important. If you are using salted, you have to reduce the amount of salt in the recipe, okay? Ooh, that looks good. All right, so now I'm gonna add my protein. So I've got here some black beans, red beans, and the corn. Okay, the corn is not the protein, just the beans. Um, and these are canned, and I've rinsed the beans really well. The corn I didn't have to rinse came out of the can. I'm gonna throw them all in, and you can change the beans up. You can add white beans if you want. Um, you can add squash, like little cubes of squash if you'd like. A few more seasoning is going into that. Some dried oregano. A little more salt, there you go. This is kind of optional, but highly recommended. I am adding some cocoa powder. So cocoa powder, when added to savory foods, gives that richness and a little bit of smokiness. It's not gonna taste like chocolate, so don't worry, it's not gonna be weird. But if you've ever had mole sauce, that's sort of the idea, that richness. And I'm only adding a couple teaspoons here. You can add a little less to get you started, or you can add more if you want something a little darker and richer. Mmm, then it'll transform right in front of you. I'm going to add a little bit of water because this needs to simmer for a while. So I just like to add enough water so it looks like it's complete, the little bits are completely submerged in the liquid. Um, for spicy, you can add any kind of hot sauce that you like for this, Mexican hot sauce to stick with the theme, but I like to add sambal oek because it's something that I've got in my pantry all the time and it's a nice vinegary spiciness. And I'm going to add a full tablespoon for this, but you can make it as spicy or as not spicy as you like. I've added Cholula hot sauce to this. You can add Tabasco. Now, I'm also going to add a little extra smokiness with a chipotle pepper. So this is dry chipotle pepper. And I just happen to have this in my pantry and I add it to the chili and it's so good. Um, it's jalapeno pepper that's been smoked and dried, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half because I don't need all of it. This is not a very big pot. And I'm going to let this simmer in the pot. Some people toast the pepper first to bring out the aroma even more. And oh, all my Mexican fans, if you've got other ideas of what you can do with the dry chipotle pe 
dried chipotle peppers. I'd love to get your ideas because I haven't done too many things with it aside from making mole and this. And I'm going to let this go at a low simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes until it sort of got this rich, thick, stewy consistency. You'll know it when you see it. Ooh, voila! There you go. That's the consistency you're looking for. And make sure you give this a taste as well. I already did. It's perfectly seasoned. Oh, and uh, while you weren't looking, I added some bell peppers, which I forgot to add. So what you'll do is you make the chili in advance and keep it in the fridge. Comes morning time, you stick your toast in the toaster, you start cooking your egg on the pan, and you can do sunny side up or poached egg or whatever you want, and you stick some of this in the microwave, and magically everything will finish cooking at about the same time. So then you pull your toaster out and you just pile it on. Oh my god! Look at that. Look how good that looks. If you want to get a little fancy, you can put some cheese on it. This is just some aged cheddar and it'll just melt with the heat of that chili and then top it off with a Beautifully fried egg, which I also made when you weren't looking. Poached egg would be great too, but poached eggs take too long. I have no patience for poached eggs in the morning. Ah, look at that. Look how perfect that looks. And you know, if you want, you can put some avocado on the side. Beautiful avocado here. And no, it was not my incredible skills that got the avocado so beautifully fanned. The avocado was a little underripe, so it made it extra easy. It's not gonna taste as good as it looks because it's a little firm, but hey, that's okay. And that's it! Look how good that looks! Oh, a little bit of green onions if you want on top for, you know, green onions make everything look good. There you go. And time to eat! Oh, yes! Let the yolk run and become part of the sauce. Oh, crusty bread. And I'm using sourdough bread, by the way, which I highly recommend because the tartness from the bread will sort of balance out the rich chili. Mmm, the spices. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, so good. That I can pull something like that off within the time it takes me to make a sunny side up egg blows my mind. I mean, this is something you see at, you know, a chic brunch place and you pay like 15, 17 dollars for this. Crusty bread and it soaks in all that juice from the chili and the creamy egg yolk and the creamy beans and all those spices and the cocoa powder. Remember the cocoa powder? That makes it rich and there's also the heat from the chili. This is an explosion of flavor, and I'm so glad I found it. I have been eating this for the past week straight, I'm telling you right now, and I'm still not tired of it, and I'm sure you will love it as well. So the recipe will be on pieskitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and if you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so right here, and I will see you next time for your next delicious adventure.